The nation's leader addressing hundreds of high school students. Corporate Grand's Bahama commanded for its role in the NTA program. And your favorite Disney character making a stop on Grand's Bahama. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Megan Shepard. Thank you so much for tuning in. Topping news, the nation's leader joining hundreds of students from throughout Grand Bahama as they learned about technology and industry during a two-day career fair at the Grand Lucayan Resort. The Prime Minister encouraging the young people to take advantage of the opportunity to garner as much information about these two vital sectors. Sabrina Brown reports. Dr. The Honorable Hubert Minnis speaking to hundreds of young people at the Industrial and Technical Career Fair, noting the significance of the two-day event as the government works to make Grand Bahama a technology hub. The career fair is just one avenue through which the government hopes to empower young Bahamians. It's essential for you to absorb and understand as much as the tech languages and equipments and technology that you see and expose to today because you are the future of the Bahamas. I want you to learn as much as you can and be assured that your government will assist you in your career path so that you can become successful. Because as I look out at you this morning, I can potentially be looking at the Bahamas' next Bill Gates. Following his address, the Prime Minister was taken on a tour of the Industrial and Technical Exhibition. Members of the corporate community showcasing what their establishments are all about and the potential opportunities available to young people. We are so happy and so proud to be a part of the youth as we are Alive and Alive is a fun company and a lot of students came over to find out exactly what Alive have. You know, everything is digital, everything is technology. The objective is to sensitize the public on safety. We also want to teach the young men the different aspects of this welding field. What BTC is really pushing, we're trying to get um, the technical field, get new blood into the company to keep the company vibrant, keep it going, stay relevant. Yesterday um, it was really good. The younger kids, today we're expecting the seniors and I see a lot of them have come around already this morning. Everybody loves our welding program. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. The nation's leader wrapping up a tour of one of the companies in the industrial park a short time ago. The nation's leader, Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Hubert Minnis, along with a delegation of government officials toured the Pharmacam Company Limited. The manufacturing plant currently manufactures the bulk active pharmaceutical ingredients used in an antiviral drug for Gilead Sciences. Now, Pharmachem is currently undergoing a multi-million dollar expansion with plans to manufacture even more drugs. Prime Minister Minnis commending the company for their outstanding work, which impacts millions around the world. What is even more significant, as small as we are here in the Bahamas, and the work that's done here by Bahamians, they supply medication to about one million individuals throughout the Bahamas, throughout the world. So that is, that is very, very um, significant. And with the additional two drugs that's being added to the complement, I'm sure that with a matter, in a matter of time, the Bahamas would be um, providing medication to well in excess of two million people. So as small as we are, we're making great significant um, contribution to the health care throughout the world. And um, I'd like to congratulate the staff members of Pharmachem and um, encourage them to continue the excellent work that they're doing. The Prime Minister and his team were briefed about the new facility that is currently under construction. Chief Financial Officer Kevin Seymour notes that the project was originally estimated to cost around $120 million, but has since increased to $180 million. He adds that over $100 million will be spent with Bahamian vendors. We uh, forecast initially that about 47 million was going to be spent with Bahamas-based 
investors or vendors. That has now increased significantly to $109 million, okay? We have actually already sunk with these uh, Bahamas-based vendors $18 million since we commenced the project. Meanwhile, the National Training Agency hosting a graduation ceremony last evening for its sixth cohort at the Ruby Swiss restaurant. The training agency was commended for the role it is playing in preparing members of society for the workforce. Kimberly Mullings reports. The National Training Agency is geared toward preparing members of the society for the workforce through internships. One of this year's Star Award recipients, trainee Caitlin Thompson, gave her account of the National Training Agency as a proud participant, describing the experience as sensational. We are so blessed to have been afforded this opportunity to be trained for the workplace, to propel us to our next destination. I have acquired the basic attributes such as teamwork, communication, punctuality, credibility, and the ability to cope under pressure. Further, I have gained the ability to exercise these sterling qualities in the workplace. This has been a rewarding experience for me. Never in my wildest dream have I have ever imagined the fun, the laughter, and the engagement that would come out of a job readiness class setting. The keynote speaker was the Minister of Labor, Senator the Honorable Dion Folks. He commended the local organizers of the program for its success on Grand Bahama, taking note of the diversity of trainees. Over one-third of the 61 persons tonight have already gotten jobs, and I'm told that most of them have already been on interviews. So this is a wonderful pro program for the young pe people. And I want to encourage more young people in Grand Bahama to sign up with the NTA. It is worth it. It all has to do with lifelong training and lifelong studying. As the technological um, age is advancing, persons who would have graduated, say, 10, 15 years, years, years ago, they're refreshing their skills to make them marketable out there in the job place. And I was very pleased to see some, some mature people here. Some 13 members of Corporate Grand Bahamas private sector partnered with the NTA to ensure that the students received hands-on experience. Minister Folk says this speaks well of the local companies. I think it is wonderful because they are not getting anything directly from it. They're not being paid. And for them to partner with the NTA is wonderful. I find the companies here in Grand Bahama, they are very good corporate citizens. And I had an opportunity to meet with about 30 of them today to talk about national training. And they are really excited about helping young people in terms of the corporate world, in terms of the government, and also the trade unions. I think with all three of us working hand in hand together, I think we can accomplish almost anything. And I am very optimistic about here in Grand Bahama. The, the, the atmosphere here is very positive, and the young people here are looking for jobs and they're training themselves. Kimberly Mullings, ZNAS Network News. A team from UNESCO visiting Grand Bahama today to conduct a series of meetings with various stakeholders in the education system. The discussions focusing on the revision of the Education Act. The team is headed by Coordinator of Regional and International Projects at the Ministry of Education, Dr. Karen St. Cyr. She is accompanied by a five-member team from UNESCO, led by Sarah bin Mahfouz, Associate Program Specialist with UNESCO Headquarters in Paris, France. Stay with us, The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues in just a moment.